Hey everyone, this is Stefan from ProjectLifeMastery.com and in this video, I wanna to talk to you about how to step up in moments of crisis. You know, at the time of me filming this video right now, there's a lot of challenges that are happening in the world. There's hurricanes that are affecting a lot of people, Hurricane Harvey that affected a lot of people in Houston, Hurricane Irma that affected Florida as well as a lot of the Caribbean islands, Hurricane Maria that devastated Puerto Rico. There's earthquakes that are happening in Mexico that are also affecting a lot of people there. There's, you know, here where I live in British Columbia, Canada, we've got wildfires that people have to evacuate their homes. Some people are losing their homes and they're homeless. There's the craziness with North Korea, the threats back and forth, a lot of uncertainty of, of nuclear war and threats um, that uh, could also affect a lot of us as well. And I find that when these challenges occur, whether you're directly affected by them or not, a lot of us that are watching this are not directly affected by this. We're just kind of bystanders observing these challenges and this um, adversity, what people have to go through. A lot of people are very passive when these moments happen. And I believe that as leaders, which I believe that you and I are, if you're watching this video right now, if you're into self-development, you are a leader. You might not know it, but I believe that we all have to cultivate the identity of being a leader. A leader, if you wanna build a great business and be successful, influence other people, lead your team, lead your community, lead your family, lead your friends. Be someone that steps up in these moments and actually goes from being passive to active. I think that's what leadership really is. Um, a lot of people, again, they're just passive. They don't do anything when these things occur. And I think a lot of people, part of that challenge is people feel helpless. And they see something that happens, you know, they look at the news or whatever, and they just think, oh, that's too bad. You know, uh, you know that, that, that sucks. And then they just go back to their day and whatever that they're focused on. And it's very easy to get caught up in ourselves, in our own lives, our own busyness, our own challenges and problems. Um, but I think what makes someone a leader is they have the ability to step outside of themselves and actually put themselves in, in, in someone else's shoes and actually care more than themselves. You know, I've talked about before on my channel the different levels of consciousness. And someone who's really a leader is oftentimes more conscious in the sense of they're not just egocentric, it's not all about them, but they're more ethnocentric or world-centric or spirit-centric where they care about the planet, other people, even though you know, it might be a totally different country than what you live in, um, there's still things that you can do. And I think that if you can really cultivate the habit of not being passive but active, then you're gonna be a leader in this world and that's gonna to translate to other aspects of your life as well. So I've actually broken down, there's five ways that um, someone can step up in these moments, a way for you to give and contribute and not just be passive, but like I said, to be active. And here's some of the things that I, I, I like to do for myself and I challenge myself with, and I'm not perfect by any means. I'm, not, I'm no Mother Teresa or, or Nelson Mandela or anything like that, but I do believe that all of us have that within ourselves. All of us, we have within us a Nelson Mandela, a Mother Teresa, one of these incredible leaders in the world that are so selfless and really make a difference in the world. I think that's what we should all strive to, 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 to grow and step into. And again, especially if you're not directly affected by these things, then that's a great opportunity for you to be active and to step up. So one thing that I think you, you know, across the board anyone could do, obviously, is to give money. You know, at times like this, when there's challenges that occur, giving money is one of the most valuable resources that you can give because it can provide food, it can provide shelter, it can provide a lot of different things, um, you know, water and, and, and save a lot of lives and help the, the, the economy or, or, or individual um, needs that people have too, to be able to get themselves together because a lot of people, they're not prepared for these moments. And I couldn't imagine what it'd be like to go through something like that and being directly affected by it. And so, you know, giving money is, is, is something that I always strive to do. And there's great organizations out there like the Red Cross. Um, they're pretty active in responding to different challenges in the world. And I think one thing that's important about this is, you know, immediately oftentimes when you say something like give money, there might be resistance that comes up within you where you feel like, well, you know, Stefan, I don't have money or I, I've got all these other problems and challenges right now in my life and I got nothing to give. I believe that when you got nothing to give, that's always the best time to give because it really trains yourself to get out of that scarcity mentality and into the abundance mentality because there's always people that are way worse off than you. How you're doing in your life right now, your problems are all relative. It's all based on 
contrasting to other people's challenges. And when you actually give out, get, give in that way um, and step outside yourself, then it actually allows your problems and challenges to dissipate in a lot of ways, or you're not as affected by it. You know, I remember um, I was in San Diego many years ago, um, and I was staying in hostels, and I was in debt. I was not in a good financial uh, situation in my life, but it was always on my vision board to live in San Diego, and so I went there for a few months. And uh, I remember, you know, Tony Robbins, every year he does something called the Basket Brigade, where you basically, you go to the store and you put together these baskets and you, you, um, you know, put a lot of food together and you deliver these baskets to different families um, that are suffering during Thanksgiving. They don't have food. They're not going to really have a Thanksgiving. Um, and, for, you know, for me, as someone that didn't have money whatsoever, I decided that I was going to feed two families just because I was inspired by someone like Tony Robbins and his story. And so I remember I went to the store and I bought everything and I went and I delivered the food and I wrote a little note um, to each of the families I delivered to saying that this is from someone that cares about you and loves you. And you know, I, the only thing that I ask is that you take good care of yourself so that one day you could do this for someone else. And I wasn't giving it as someone that was actually giving it. I was actually you know, more so the d delivery person um, and not taking the credit or the claim for someone that's giving it. But, you know, regardless of the challenges that I had at that time in my life, you know, it was one of the most powerful things that I did. It really freed me in so many different ways. Um, and I remember actually at the time I went to Taco Bell afterwards because that's where I'd often eat and I wasn't really that into health back in that day. Uh, but at Taco Bell and I just felt like so amazing, so blessed to be, a, be someone who is a giver and be someone that's a leader in this world. And uh, you know, giving money, I've always said, it's not about the amount, it's about the habit. And so even if it's going to Red Cross and giving $10, $5, a dollar, whatever the minimum is, just the habit of that will give you so much incredible benefit in terms of your identity and who you are and your gratitude and your self-esteem, your confidence. I think that's a very ad admirable thing to be able to do. And of course, as you make more money, you, know, you, you can obviously give more, but um, just the habit of it and being the leader, giving something I think is incredibly valuable. So money is number one. If you can't give money, then time would be the second most valuable thing that you could probably do. Um, time in sense of giving your energy, your time to volunteer, giving your time uh, to, to be able to help that situation. And obviously I know that if you don't, you know, you're not, you don't live in those areas, it might be a little bit more challenging for you to be able to do that, but you can volunteer and help in your own city. I'm sure there's uh, homeless shelters, there's a lot of things that you could probably donate and volunteer your time to be able to make a difference. And those are some things that I've enjoyed doing um, that I found incredibly gratifying and, and um, a lot of fun too, to connect with people and give and make a difference in that way. Uh, so giving your time is valuable, you know, if you can obviously go to that place and respond, there's some people that do that. There's some people that I look up to, I admire in such a way that, you know, when Haiti, you know, uh, had that devastation, there's people that are flying to Haiti, a lot of celebrities, a lot of leaders, and just regular people you don't even know about that step up and do it because they're not doing it for the recognition. They're just doing it because it's right. You know, I'm going to Ethiopia, you know, um, next month to, to volunteer for a school that I, I help fund and to build. And I've done other trips like that and I can't give as much time as I'd like and money has been a lot easier for me to give but time which I think is also, it really associates you to it and again, it gets you outside yourself, it's very powerful. So money and time, those are the obvious things. Uh, the third thing that's worth giving is blood. Blood is a real resource, it's incredibly valuable, it can really help and, and, and people need blood. You know, people that are in really dire circumstances that need blood. Um, you know, volunteering and giving your blood is one of the best things that you can do. Um, not only that, but it's actually good for you. It's actually healthy. Um, you know, women op, you know, women have their cycles and their periods every month, so they naturally cleanse and, and they have the cleansing process to get rid of blood. But for men, um, giving blood is incredibly healthy because when you give blood and you take that out of your body, your body ha you're getting rid of some toxicity, but your body has to create new red blood cells. And so it's a bit of a cleansing process for you as well. And I, I enjoy giving blood because I think that's just such a valuable resource. And not only that, but it's actually good for you. Um, so if I were to challenge you, giving blood, um, going to your local you know, blood bank or whatever it might be, and just go in, it, it doesn't take long to do, and you just, you know, they take your blood and you give it, and that's something that can really change and help someone in a meaningful way. Um, the fourth thing that you can do is to pray, 
or send positive energy. Now, I don't know what um, your spiritual beliefs are. You know, I, I'm personally a spiritual person. I believe that there's something greater than ourselves, and I believe in God and energy and, and law of attraction and, and all that sort of stuff. I think that's incredibly valuable. But if you don't give your money, your time, or your blood, then give give something. Give give prayers. Give positive thoughts for those that really need it. And this is something there's no excuse not to do. It takes one minute. You know, whether it's just you take a minute right now and you know you see something on the news that's happening, or someone's going through a devastation. All you got to do is just silence yourself, close your eyes, put your hand on your heart, and just send love, send energy, send you know wish well wishes for that person that everything's gonna work out for them or that you'll love them, whatever that might be or whatever way that makes the most sense for you to be able to do that, I think that's something that is incredibly valuable as well. And again, the whole point of this, guys, is not to be passive but active. Do something. There's no excuse not to do anything at all. That's how a leader responds. They step up in these moments. They step up. They don't just sit around and, and think, oh, that's too bad. That sucks. There's nothing I can do. There's always something that you can do. Don't be helpless. Don't be passive. Step up and be active. And I think you know one of the last things that you could probably do um, is to give love. Give love in some way. Give support and do it in an active way. You know, We live in this world online, right? You guys are watching this. There's uh, means of leaving comments and messages and whatever it is. And um, one of my favorite rituals that I often do every week and sometimes every day, part of my morning ritual, is I just go online and I just anonymously leave positive comments. I'll watch a video on YouTube of someone and just find a random person and I'll give them a compliment. You know, I'll send them some love or I might find people on Twitter or I might find people on Facebook or whatever it might be that they're going through a hard time or challenges, whatever it is. And even if they're not, I'll still try to give them love in some way. You know, you know it could be on, your, on Facebook. You know, just going to someone that you know or even a stranger. You don't have to know that person but just going over to their page and saying, you know, writing them a positive message. You know, I love you. I'm wishing you well. Hopefully everything's great for you in your life or things will turn around. I'm thinking about you. I pray for you. That means so much to that other person. You know, and again, if, if it's a video on YouTube, there's so much hate, there's so much negativity, there's so many people out there that are um, putting out negative energy and the only way to combat that is with love. You know, there's a great saying by Martin Luther King Jr. He says that I choose love because hate is too far of a burden to bear. And love is only the only remedy for anger and hate, something that the Dalai Lama said. So that's something that you can do that's active and that will train you to be a leader, to be a giver in this world, and also someone who's a hero. You know, I, I look up, you know, when 9-11 happened, there's people out there that risk their lives or just step up and they're and and they don't even know that person, no association, they're just a total stranger, but they'll run in. And they'll respond and help that person. Or, or if there's uh, something that happens, um, you know, a, a car accident or someone faints on the street or whatever it is, there's people that step up in those moments, whether they call 911 or they respond in a positive way or they try to do something. And I don't know about you guys, but that's something that I strive towards is being a hero, being someone that can really help others in this world and change people's lives and really make a difference. And that all comes down to the habits that you cultivate, getting outside yourself, being active. And again, there's no excuse not to do anything. Do something every day or whenever these things occur, but step up. That's one thing that I've noticed from the people that I look up to the most in this world is they're not just all about themselves, but they're about really making a difference and serving. So I want to leave you guys with that, is how to step up in those moments um, to, to be a leader, to be someone who's a force for good and really serves and makes a difference. And if you're someone that's directly affected by this, I know I've never been through big uh, crises uh, like that, but you know, I can only imagine and mean the world um, to, to for people to pray for me or, or to give or contribute in that way. Um, I'm in a more abundant situation in my life now, so I can do that even more so than ever. But you know, even when I was struggling, even when I was in scarcity, I was still doing these things. And it's amazing how that frees you, the happiness, the joy, the self-esteem, the identity. Oftentimes you attract more into your life. 
You know, it's kind of a counterintuitive thing is that the more that you put out there, the more it comes back to you. It's like the law of attraction. The more that you focus on, you do good, the more good comes to you in your life. And so it is something that, you know, directly affects you in so many different ways. Um, but I think it's just a very important subject that I wanted to step up today and share and talk about because there are these challenges happening. I have some influence and people that look up to me online and hopefully I can be a role model for you and, and inspire you or challenge you or whatever it might be for you to step up and grow and cultivate that identity of a leader. And if, again, if you're directly affected by this, oftentimes I talk a lot about what you can do on my channel and all my content and whatnot is to get yourself in a strong place. And that's why I'm a big believer and advocate of rituals every day because you gotta prepare yourself. There will be challenges and crises in your life, but you gotta prepare, you've gotta you got lift weights, you've gotta train your mind, your emotions, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, so that when these things occur, you're solid, you're strong. You know, you're, you're like that rock and it's just the waves and the ocean kind of crashing against you, but you're rock solid and you're an immovable object. That's what your rituals are meant to do is to pro be proactively putting yourself in a good position, not being reactive when things come up, challenges come up, but when you're strong every day and you are feeding your mind and you're reading books and learning and growing and you're taking care of your health and your body and spiritually and your belief, beliefs and your mindset, your gratitude, all these things that you do that I preach and talk about, that's what allows you to endure most challenges that other people get crumbled by. You know, most people, their mindset is like a house of cards. You, you know, you pull one, the whole thing collapses because they don't have a foundation. But if you're doing rituals every day and you're training your mindset and your beliefs and all the things that I talked about, then, then you're gonna be able to respond in, in, in a more powerful way. You know, leaders are people that they get affected just like everyone else, but they're more solid and so therefore it doesn't, you know, destroy them, but they can respond in powerful ways to really make a difference. So rituals and what I preach on my channel and my courses and content, um, I think can really help you to deal with that adversity and those challenges um, if you're directly going through it. And if you are directly going through a challenge right now or um, a, a situation, a hurricane, whatever that might be, then my love, my support, my prayers goes out to you. I love you, I'm thinking about you. This too shall pass and everything will work out because everything in life happens for a reason and a purpose and it serves you. And as long as you have that faith, then you can get through anything that you're going through. So thank you guys for watching this video. Always believe, commit your life to mastery, be active, be a leader, and I'll talk to you soon.